you guys. Now, thank you so much for hitting that subscribe button and all you guys that have been commenting and liking the video. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. If you guys haven't checked out my last video, I would highly suggest go watching it. I took my 97 GSX of drag racing and the best we were able to do was 139.44 miles per hour at 10.9 seconds. Also, later in the video, we gotta go test out the rolling anti-lag and the no lift to shift. I promised you guys we would go test it out, so I gotta put the car back together and we're gonna go test it later in the video. If you guys remember my goal, I wanted to hit 140 mile an hour pass that day. I didn't really care about the seconds. I really cared about the miles per hour because I know what the car can do. Now, there's a couple reasons why we didn't hit our 140 mile an hour pass. These are the reasons why. Real fast, man, this carbon fiber hatch is looking so freaking nice, you guys. Oh, I love this thing. Yes. Sorry, I love carbon fiber. But look, my shifting sucked. My launching sucked. Those are things that I have to work on 100%. Actually, I bought something that's gonna help me launch the car a whole lot better, and I'm gonna be showing you guys later on in the video what that is. Now, I can't stress it enough, you guys. When you guys take your car racing, you have to check over the entire car from bumper to bumper. Make sure all the lug nuts are tight. Make sure everything is in the proper operations. One of the biggest things you have to do for a turbocharged car is we'll do what's called a boost leak test. And for those that don't really know what a boost leak test is, your turbocharger builds positive pressure. In this case, I had it set to hit 46 PSI. No matter what I did, the turbocharger only built about 36 pounds. Now, I increased the boost controller to literally 56 PSI. Later that day, I came home and I did a boost leak test. Now, what this does is it pressurizes the turbocharger, all your intercooler piping, all your couplers, your intake manifold, your entire engine is pretty much pressure tested to see if you have any air air leaks. And sure enough, I had a boost leak. You see this coupler coming off of the turbocharger? You won't believe it, you guys. I did not tighten that coupler when I did the transmission a while back. Now that we addressed the boost leak issue, let's address the elephant in the room. That's me. So the car has a dog box transmission with a competition twin disc clutch, and honestly, it's pretty difficult for this thing to launch because you only have about this much of play before the car is either going or not going. And honestly, it does require a lot of practice for me to do it, but the problem is I don't want to break nothing while trying to practice. So I bought this device, it's called a launch controller. Now, some of you guys might hate it and flame me for using it and trying to install it, but here's the bottom line is I don't want to break the car and I want the car to be consistent and this device may help me be more consistent. So this is made by Magnus Motorsports and what this is, it's a launch control device. So theoretically, I could let the clutch off super, super fast and the clutch will slowly come out to my liking however I adjust it. Now that's gonna help me launch the car a whole lot better and honestly help me not break as many parts because you know, I don't wanna break my drivetrain parts, it's too expensive. So you guys can tell I don't have a wiper system no more. So I'm actually gonna install it inside this wiper cow and the knob is gonna come out right here. So it's gonna be super clean, super tucked, and all the lines are gonna be ran inside my wiper cow. So technically, you would never know that I have a launch controller device unless you watch my video and know that I do. Actually, if you guys wanted to, put it down in the comments. What do you think we should do? Should we install the launch controller, temporary, and just kind of try it out and see if we like it, or just learn how to drive better? Both works, I guess. <laughs> Ever since I came back from the drag strip, I haven't taken out the car because we're low on C16 race gas, and this weekend, I'm gonna go pick up some more. But I had some time to detail the rear bumper and the rear tail light assembly. Obviously, we gotta make the rear end look nice for all the haters. I should have said that. I'm not that type of person, guys. But hey, what the heck, it's fun. <laughs> Let's just admire this real fast because, oh my God, you can see everything with this. And the carbon fiber shines up so freaking nice. I love kind of how the center tail light assembly and the carbon match. I really like that. It does make the rear end look a whole lot nicer, man. God, look at that. I wish the whole car looked like that. So here's another startup and remember guys, it has a side exit. Now I gotta put this cardboard box right here because well, as you can see on first startup, she runs a little bit rich. And let's face it, I do not wanna get my snap-on toolbox messed up. If you guys are wondering why there's a massive snap-on toolbox inside my tiny garage that's the size of my car, it's because I used to be an automotive technician for the last 10 years. I ended up quitting my job to become full-time in my real estate business. More on that later if you guys are interested at the end of the video. But the moment we've been waiting for, besides the rolling anti-lag, is the startup. Ha! 
Ah, sweet Jesus, that's C16. So before I die of Minoxapuff gas, let's back out the GST so I can back out the GSX and actually idle it out in the open air where I'm not gonna die. So when I was detailing the rear bumper, I decided to detail the front of the GST. And uh, well, it looks a little bit better, you guys. It's like musical cars. We gotta move the GST and the Duramax because well, we couldn't fit the GSX out of here. That carbon glisten in the sunlight. Oh my goodness, this is beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love this thing. Drag slicks, boys. So here's kind of a problem. I promised you guys we were going to go for some poles. I don't have any more race gas. And, uh, well, I don't know if this is the safest thing, but hey, I promised you guys, and when I make a promise, I keep it. Now we only got enough gas for maybe one or two pulls and then after that I'm coming home, I'm detailing it and we're just gonna have to wait until I get some fuel. But hey, on a bright note, I know it looks ridiculous but I said I was gonna get a POV cam and uh, well this is what it looks like and hopefully it comes out good. I've never used one of these so let's go ahead and swap over to the POV cam and let's just go for a drive. Alright, we're good? We're good. Let's go. I forgot it's a dog box, you gotta shift really fast. Now, the whole point of this is we're gonna be testing the no lift to shift and we're gonna be testing the rolling anti-lag. But also at the same time, we gotta make sure that my boost setting is correct. And there's a cop right there, god dang it. There's literally a cop right in front of us right now. We're good, I think, I hope. Oh, 
man. Woo! I don't know what the heck happened. Did I try to put it in fifth? What the heck? <laughs> I got scared again, you guys. It is so scary. I can't explain to you guys how scary it is. <laughs> it takes off like a rocket ship. It's insane. Oh, man. Okay, let's, let's go back. Let's go. We got to go back home. Come on, let's go. You know, I wondered how much pounds of boost we were actually hitting. I saw the gauge, it read about 40 PSI. I'm not 100% sure. I'll go back through the data logs and find out how much PSI we were actually building. There's a cop, way over there. Let's go this way, guys. There's a cop coming. Honestly, I didn't think that there was going to be that many cops. I don't know if you guys can hear this or not. That's a lot of sirens and you know, we did hit about 135 miles an hour right now. Wait, it was all taken in Mexico though. That's the thing. So it's okay. <laughs> We had to test it, I'm sorry. I mean, we had to test it to see if I was hitting the 46 pounds of boost. Speaking of that, let's go and check out the laptop and see if I was actually hitting 46 pounds of boost. So it's not what we were wanting, but we're at about 40 PSI, which isn't too, too horrible. If you guys look at the horsepower, it's saying about 711 horsepower. You know, it's a possibility. I mean, I'm not 100% sure what this thing puts out. I never put it on the dyno. I know it's 700 plus because I mean, let's face it, the thing's a freaking monster. Well, that was fun, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed that little test drive. And hey, we kind of figured it out. I want to say we're running about 40 plus pounds of boost. We just got to tinker with the boost controller a little bit more and go from there. But I can't really do a whole lot because I don't have no more race gas. So obviously, I'm kind of stuck at where I am right now. So that's the only bad thing. But man, this thing looks so good though. So I just want to give you guys a quick update real fast on my houses. So early in the video, I told you guys that I was an automotive technician for the last 10 years. Well, believe it or not, for the last five years that I was an automotive mechanic, I hated my job. I couldn't stand my job. I hated getting up every single day going to work and it was miserable. I got treated like crap. It's just the environment was not healthy for me whatsoever. And we went through a lot of mechanics in this last couple of years. And you know, people don't quit their jobs, they quit management. And I'll be honest with you guys, I needed a way out. And what I decided five years ago was to, instead of spending all of my money on race cars and turbos and race parts, I decided to invest in real estate. About five years ago, I ended up buying a rental property and it unlocked so many doors for me because I ended up researching and learning how to buy a rental property and how to do it over and over and over again. I follow what's called the Burr strategy. It's created about $1.4 million of rental real estate for me. And I do get passive income every single month where I was able to quit my job that I didn't like and actually do something that I enjoy every day and work on my houses and rehab them myself. In the beginning, I had no idea how to do any of that stuff. And honestly, I learned everything from YouTube, just watching tons of videos on how to buy rental real estate, how to manage it, how to rehab them, how to finance them. And it's been one of the best things that I've ever done in my whole life, guys, because I was able to quit a job that I just, I, I hated it. I really did, I really hated my job. Believe it or not, I used all of the anger from my job to fuel my real estate business. Because honestly, without that fuel, I would have never have done what I've done so far. And I easily would have gave up. If it wasn't for other people on YouTube showing me how to buy real estate or even showing me how to work on a car or build it, you know, I wouldn't be in the position where I am. So if you guys have any questions at all about the cars, about my rental, real estate business go ahead and put it down in below I'm gonna answer every question I can to the best of my ability because I appreciate you guys so just like that I hope you guys enjoyed today's video we'll see you later bye